Hi, it's Julie. I'm your lighting designer. Welcome to the Airness Philips Hue tutorial. So this is going to be, uh, I figured, the easiest way to walk people through how to get their uh, kit of Philips Hue equipment set up would be to make a little video. So every person is going to get a kit that includes, among other things, three of these little PAR 38 cans, this is basically just a regular household light bulb socket in a focusable PAR can on a little floor plate. And as a special bonus, the floor plates that you guys are gonna get are actually made out of pieces of the Verge stage. Okay, so you will also get a huge a Philips Hue starter kit, which has the following components. It's got three light bulbs and a bridge and a power supply and a network cable. So that's what's in this kit. I'm also going to send you some power strips and extension cords uh, so that hopefully no matter what your power situation in the room that you're using as your film studio, um, you'll have what you need to get everything powered up. Uh, open up your box. You'll notice these are labeled. Uh, the box and the various devices are all labeled with the kit number. That is because I have pre-paired uh, everything and updated all the firmware, hopefully to make the up and running process pretty plug and play for you. So, um, what you're gonna do is just unpack the stuff here. Um, this is your little bridge uh, that communicates wirelessly with your devices. This is its power supply. This is its uh, network cable. It's like a cat, cat something, cat5, uh, that will enable you to connect it to your Wi-Fi router. If you don't have a Wi-Fi router, we will provide you with a Wi-Fi router. It does not need to be on the internet. Uh, it just needs to create a Wi-Fi network that you can use locally in your house. It's fine if it is on the internet. So most of you probably will be using the Wi-Fi router that also supplies your internet service. Okay, so we're gonna set these guys aside for the moment. Your first step is to put your light bulbs in your park hands. And this is just screwing them in. There's number one. There's number two. number three. All right. So now this box may come in handy for purposes of changing the angle of our lights, etc. So keep it handy. I may ask you during tech rehearsals to elevate it a little bit or move it or things like that. So have a little couple of booster chairs around. Okay, so once you get your light bulbs uh, installed into your park hands, you want to connect them to hot power. So I'm going to plug all these guys into my power strip here. Hey, what's the deal? Aha. Okay. And they should all come on. They're not talking to anything yet. Uh, but they're, they know their instruction is when they receive hot power and they don't have any instruction from a bridge. Come on and stand by, basically. Okay, our next step is you need a device that you're gonna run your Philips app on. It can be an Android device, uh, a phone or a tablet, um, or an iOS device, iPhone, iPad, anything like that. Um, if, if you don't have one, we'll provide one for you. If you have a Windows device, um, I can work with that, but let me know because I've got to put you on a different app. So first thing we're going to do is go to your App Store or your Google Play, whatever. It's going to tell me what's popular today. I'm going to go to the search function and I'm going to type Philips Hue and search. And it's going to come up with quite a few options here. Some of these are official Philips Hue apps and some of them are third-party apps. You're looking for the one that says 
Phillips Hue, uh, oops, official Phillips Hue app. And you should see, this is what it should look like right here. So we're gonna click on that. And I, it's already in my cloud, so I've got a little cloud symbol here, but if you haven't put it on your, if you're just now putting it on your machine, I think you'll have a, it'll say download or something. Anyway, so I'm going to install this app. So it's installing itself on my iPad right now. We'll give that a minute. Okay, and it's down installing, so we're gonna hit open. Okay, now the app is gonna boot up and it's gonna walk us through a series of steps to connect. Okay, so first thing it says is, I'm looking for a bridge, looking for a bridge, looking for a bridge, and I'm not finding anything, and that's because here's the bridge, it's not plugged in. So our next step is, it said, oh, no bridge found, and it gives us the option to search again. So now I gotta take this bridge to our Wi-Fi router and plug it in. So we're gonna take our device. We're gonna take our power supply. We're gonna take our router. If we need to, we're gonna take an extension cord, etc. We're gonna take our, our video and I will see you uh, in the closet that houses my Wi-Fi router. Welcome to my um, front coat closet, home of my Wi-Fi router. So I've got my uh, tablet and my bridge and my power supply and my ethernet cable. What we gotta do is get hot power to this and then plug this into one of the jacks on the back of this router. My router happens to be um, mounted up high in there and I've got it running to an ethernet switch in here, which powers all of these jacks kind of all over my house. So I'm actually gonna put my router up on this little shelf up here because if I plug it into this jack, that's basically equivalent to plugging it into the back of my router. Okay, so Hang on. All right, so got my Ethernet plugged in. And I've got power coming to the bridge. Now, it's going to go through a little boot up process. Right now, it's indicating it has power. Oh, wow, that was fast. Oh, wait, no, nope, we're blanking. Uh, you need to wait for all three indicator lights uh, to come on. Right now, it's indicating it has power. The middle one will indicate when it has, um, I think, a, a connection to the network. And I think the far one indicates it has internet. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so you're waiting for all three of these blue indicator lights to come on. All right, there's the network light. There's the one that I think means it has internet. Okay, you if that doesn't come on because you're not using a, a Wi-Fi network that's connected to the internet, that's okay. I think you only need the first two. Let's find out. Okay, so now that we have this connected, we're gonna go back to our Philips Hue app and say, okay, search again. And it's searching. There you go, now it found it. Okay, so now we're gonna hit connect. And now it says, the cat paw is indicating that you're supposed to push the button on the, on the bridge. This is part of its effort to make sure you're not a hacker in a remote location. So we're gonna hit this button. And then the app, is going to ask us for permission to access our home data. Once again, this is to make sure that it's really you in your home with all the equipment in your local location and you're not some nefarious um, entity trying to hack somebody's home network.
Okay, so we're back up in my um, ad hoc video studio. And now that we have the, hang on, let me see if I can get a better view here. Now that we've got uh, everything talking to each other, you should have uh, a screen that says Airness All Lights. That is what I have named your whole set of lights. Now we're gonna learn how to navigate the app a little bit. The app, navigate the app a little bit. Okay, if you hit that, you're gonna open up that room, metaphorically speaking, and it's gonna give you one of three screens you can use to view your set of lights. This is what I call the list view. It corresponds to this little icon up here. So you've got a list view, you've got a little icon that looks like a palette, you've got a little icon that looks like a color mixer, okay? So this is the list view, and let me just walk you through navigation here. Up on top is like a master set of controls. You've got an on-off switch right here that turns on and off all your lights in the room. And you've got a master dimmer control that dims all your lights down and up as a group. Oops. And they're back up. Okay. Uh, then you have each individual light has its own little slider. I don't know if you can see, but I've got these pre-named uh, as stage left, stage right, and upstage. First thing that we have to do is identify which one of these cans is which one of those and get them in the right place in your room. So you're just gonna turn one off, turn it back on again. So I've named this one stage left and it is, wait, uh, oh, it's this guy right here, which is sitting to my stage right. So we're gonna fix that by moving this guy over here. Okay, so there's our stage left. Now, by chance, uh, that's the upstage one. Uh, this one is the one that blinked off when I did the upstage one. So we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna move it to upstage of us. We're gonna use our upstage par probably mostly to light whatever is behind you, which may be some scenic elements, it may be a blank wall, to be determined, but anyway. It's okay to unplug it from this power source and move it to a different power source as you're moving it around. So, uh, I'm just moving to, oh my, it's a little crowded over here. Um, a small fleet with bar cans. Okay. I'm going to just point this at the wall upstage of me. plugging into a different source of power, and it came right off. So that's good. So now that guy is going to light this wall, which in your case may be a scenic montage. It might be a blank sheet of fabric. I don't know. We're working that out. Okay. So coming back around to my desk, let's just verify that our third can, which is called the stage right can, is working. And yes, it is. That is the one that is stage right of me. So um, to get us started, um, we basically want to position these lights relative to you to light you well. So what I'm doing, I'm going to change my angle on the camera here. So you can see my whole little setup here. I'm sitting at a desk. Oh my. I'm sitting at a desk. Imagine, if you will, that my Zoom laptop is right here. I'm going to position this can all the way to the front of the desk so that it's basically a side light on this side of my face. And I'm gonna position this can on my right so that it is, let's just start with it at the same height as the other one for now. That's, let's start with simple, go from there. Okay, and I, these are pretty floody, so you don't have to get it exactly pointed at you, but just rotate it around so it looks like it's pointed right at you, okay? So I've got one from stage left coming this way, one from stage right coming this way, and here I am. All right, I think it's time to switch up my angle here. All right, hopefully there's a better camera angle for uh, walking you through the app. So here we are on the home screen where it just says airness, all lights, 
and we can control all of them in a, you know, as a group from this screen. It's probably not all that useful to us because we'd like to control them individually. We're going to click on that room and then it puts us into one of three uh, modes. Uh, probably it'll come up in what I call the list mode, which is it just shows an individual bar for each of your three park hands. And from here, you can individually toggle them on and off or dim them down. Is that reading? Yeah, okay, you can see that's going off. Okay, whoops. Okay, yep. All right, so that's the list view. The next little icon here is the, it, it looks like a, a painter's palette. That is the scene view, and this is how you recall pre-programmed looks. We'll be using this to get you from one look to another during the show. There's a whole bunch of cheesy pre-programmed stuff in here, like Savannah Sunset, which if I click that, I get kind of a mix of, you know, reds and yellows and stuff like that. Uh, if I go to Arctic Aurora, we get some blues and greens, etc. So, you know, that's fun, fun to play with. Uh, we'll probably use Bright, which is just everything on at a nice, lovely incandescent-like uh, glow for some scenes. And then for other scenes, we'll do more of a mixed color thing. Now, uh, there's one other screen here in the three icons. There's the list, the scene view, and then there's the color picker. And this is basically a representation of where your lights are uh, on, the, on the color spectrum. Right now you can see we have a little three right there because they're all exactly the same color. So they're basically, the pins are right on top of each other. If we click on that, it'll, it'll break them out into the individual pins and we can drag them individually. So I'm gonna, just gonna take one of them and drag it into green. Uh, these two are still on top of each other, so I click that. I'll drag one of them into pink. And then this one, which is upstage, I'll drag over into the blue range. Okay, so now I've got a lovely color mix here. So in this view, you can just, you know, fiddle to your heart's content. So um, also when you go to the color picker mode, you'll notice there's another icon down here, which is also a teardrop shape, but it's different shades of white. So if you wanna fine tune things in the white range, you can do that where if you go, let's see, which one are we working with here? Ah, here we go. All right, so this can right here, uh, we can go to a really blue white, we can go to a really warm white, or anywhere in between. So this is basically uh, just a white balance thing. To get back out to the, um, sort of zoom back out to the whole spectrum, um, we just click on that other icon, and then we're back to where we can drag things through the whole color spectrum. All that, all those white things are right here in the middle. So the white, uh, white balance one is really just a close-up view of that really middle section. Okay, so that's kind of three ways, three different modes in which you can manipulate your lights. Now, the fun thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna write our own scenes and give them names. So let's say during tech rehearsals, we decide based on the layout of the screen, maybe face benders in the middle and Nina's over here, the Nina's over here and, you know, et cetera. Um, I'll basically be composing uh, looks as we go and I'll just tell you which light to select and what color to make it. So you'll have to manipulate on your uh, app um, I might say, make your stage left light um, yellow. So let's figure out the stage left one is pink, so we can tell it's this one. So we're just gonna drag it right across to the yellow. And I might say, go a little towards green. Okay, cool, great. Now, if that's a look that we like, we can record that as a new scene with this new scene button right here. We're gonna tap to enter the name. Uh, and let's call that, oops, didn't want to go to the camera roll. Tap to enter name, and let's call that, I don't know, scene 17 or whatever. Save, okay, uh, and save. Now, 
Look at that, it appears in our scene list and, it, and that bar is highlighted indicating that that's where we're at. At any time we can edit that scene by clicking on the, click on the scene and, or let's see, wait, let, let's say we're in a different scene and we wanna to go to 17, we're just gonna click on 17. If we wanna edit that, we're gonna click on the pencil icon uh, let's see, clicking on the pencil icon icon gives us some options. There's a little pop-up menu. You can edit the scene, you can rename the scene, you can add it to Siri, let's just not get into that, or you can delete the scene. So we want to edit the scene. That puts us in the color picker, and we can drag to our heart's content and resave it. Okay? Now, a nice thing about this is you can change the order of these icons so that we can drag them into show order. So to do that, I think we just hold, click on it, hold it down, and drag it to a new location. So let's write a new scene. Let's say uh, we're gonna write a new scene. So you, you can write a new scene by clicking on the new scene button here, or you can just start from another scene and change it up a little bit and then say, well, I guess you can't. You have to click new scene. Okay, click new scene, tap to enter the name. Uh, let's call it scene three, save. And now we're gonna edit it a little bit. So let's say this is going back to more of a white look with a little bit of color here and there. Okay, we're gonna save that. It shows up in our scene list and we're gonna drag it. Hello? Nope. We're gonna drag it up to there we go, the top of our list. Night has fallen, so now we can work in darkness. It's my favorite state. Uh, one other important thing I'm giving you in your kit is a roll of spike tape. And that is so, as we're working, you can spike for yourself the position of your laptop, your lights, uh, yourself if necessary, um, so that you can easily reproduce uh, what we designed for you um, as we go along. So first thing that we'll do probably in our initial one-on-one -on -one setup mode is establish spikes for your laptop and your three lights. So um, wherever your laptop is going to be, you know, just like you'd spike any piece of scenery, put little feet, right? And then uh, when we get to focusing the lights, uh, let me just turn on my stage left light, just in any old color. And I need to point it at me. Okay, so if we decide that's the right location for that light for the top of the show, I'm gonna take your piece of spike tape here. Give yourself a little line right on your desk where the front of the floor plate goes. And you can even, if you have a Sharpie, right on that spike, uh, scene one. And then later on, if we end up saying, oh, let's put that on a box over here, you can put another spike over here that says, scene two, use box or something like that, okay? Um, and also if you are moving around your room, um, because you have to be further away from your camera uh, to get a, a wider shot for your guitar solos or whatever. Um, you can put X's on the floor or whatever. So the spike tape is just to make you, um, it's just a tool for you to more easily reproduce um, the physical location of everything as you're running your show. Um, one other thing I want to recommend to people is that you have one light that you provide that is not on the Hue system, that is preferably an incandescent light source, but any white light source will do. It's only a backup. And in this case, what I'm using is, I've got a big fat drafting lamp over my table. Um, and this is like, let's say my app crashes, my, um, my lights malfunction, my Wi-Fi router gets unplugged downstairs, for some reason, all my hue lights stop working. Well, you know, the show must go on. So if your lights are just not behaving themselves or if you freak out and you can't deal with it or whatever, you can always just turn on your regular light and we'll be able to see you and the show can keep going, okay? 
So um, I've got this light on just so we can see what we're doing as we're getting started. But now let us um, go ahead and have a little fun here. Let's turn this out. Okay, got my tablet right here below my laptop. So you can see on the screen, we're just looking at a picture of me lit by only this part right now, because that's the only thing that's on. Um, let's go to our scene list. Got to back out of this screen. Um, select the palette icon, and then here's our scene list. So let's say my top of show preset is that one, okay? So uh, this is off because we don't need it. All my other room lights are off. We'll have you make a little pre-show checklist of things to check for, uh, you know, just like you would set your props. You're also going to make sure that your room lights are off, your uh, backup light is off but standing by, your um, PARs are all in their act or in their scene one positions, which may or may not be their whole show position. We don't know yet. Um, and um, and you're in your lighting preset. Um, also, I recommend I'm being a bad girl right now, and I'm not doing that. But for running the show, we would want to have this plugged in so that we don't accidentally, you know, run out of battery power and have your app, your your whole um, uh, tablet go down and be useless. Same with your laptop, obviously. So make use of those power strips. Okay, so ready to start the show, right? So you're standing by for scene one. You're in your lighting queue for scene one. Ansel does his magic, and Aaron sends you some sort of secret signal. I don't know how that works, but you um, understand that it is time to do scene one. Great, so you're live in scene one. Scene one ends. You are now off camera due to Ansel having changed what the audience sees. And now you can do your, um, you know, your interstitial activities such as Costume changes, apply some eyeliner, um, put your wig on, uh, change your shirt, get your props where they need to be, move your lights to their position for the next thing, and go to your next light cue. And now you're set up for your next scene, and bang, you're on, you do your scene, etc. Okay? That's kind of how we're going to do it, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too.